the trailing haptic stuck in the cartridge what should we do once the trailing haptic is stuck inside the cartridge it should be released without any damage to the haptic for a successful outcome of the surgery various methods of techniques are adopted by different surgeons to tackle this situation but none of them are satisfactory those are releasing the trailing haptic by sinski hook push and pull technique radial cut on the cartridge by mbr knife implanting the iol with broken haptic sometimes the surgeon compromise the situation by implanting the iol with a broken haptic but broken haptic may lead to significant early pco later the iol might need to remove due to the disintegration in that case the surgeon has to either extend the wound by compromising the size of the wound or removing without extension the wound by adapting relatively difficult techniques without extension of the wound the surgeon has to adapt the technique of holding the eye well again inside the eye or dividing it into at least two pieces by using a snare for removal dr e ahmed in 2012 published a technique for the management of trapped haptic during iol injection he demonstrated splitting the cartridge by using mbr blade and releasing the trapped haptic later a lot of surgeons adopted this technique but i feel this technique was also not very promising most of the time surgeons need an extra instrument to release it manually by this step sometimes the haptic may be injured during manipulation in this video the author demonstrates a useful technique how to manage the stuck trailing haptic of the iol which was trapped in the cartridge during implantation let us see how i manage the situation with this innovative technique Considering all factors the author adopt a new technique to overcome all the issues the moment the training haptic was found stuck in the plunger which is seen in this video i hold the plunger in my left hand and using my dominating right hand i cut a u shaped fashion block in the silicon plunger with the help of a 15 degree knife which was used for making side ports by the moment the u shaped portion of the silicon plunger is being separated from the rest of the plunger the trailing haptic gets released automatically without any further manipulation as prevention is always better we need to understand why does the haptic get stuck in the cartridge The answer to this could be poor quality of the cartridge or inserted system, the faulty technique of the eye well loading, insufficient use of viscoelastic substance. This situation can be avoided by using proper technique of eye well loading, like thorough irrigation of the cartridge by BSS or Ringer Electric solution before using viscoelastic, use of sufficient viscoelastics. proper loading of the eye well in the cartridge thank you thank you very much doctor uh, that was a, a wonderful way of very simple a simple thing you picked up and you discussed it piecemeal and uh, just very nice i'm sure all of us relearned something as we keep watching the small issues which come up in all these videos uh, thank you very much uh, now uh, of course just when it comes talking about injector both ramurthy and roy yes ma'am um, uh, yes i just have a question now what are this uh, dr gaurav has joined i had this question for gaurav in mind because gaurav does a lot of hydro implantation now when you are uh, have you ever thought 
the, the challenge which you face when you are using a screw type of injector and what is the challenge which you face? Oh, he's not got connected. Anyway, you all can answer. A uh, screw type of injector or a push type of injector, what are the challenges which you face if you want to do a hydro implantation? Gaurav? Uh, I just joined. Uh, the question is on hydro implantation, ma'am. No, the question is, this was a stuck haptic uh, uh -huh. that got released and he showed a nice way. I just thought, in because it was, his thing was so completely explanatory, I thought I'll just move and talk about the injectors. Since you do hydro implantation, would you use a screw type or would you use a push type? And for hydro implantation, you have to use a pusher only. You cannot yeah. use a screw type at all because yeah. one hand is for uh, you know switching on the infusion. And uh, the second hand has to be used. So you can single-handed uh, injectors are only possible. Yes. And that's why there is a problem with, uh, you know, and also if your uh, IOL gets stuck, you said that one haptic got delivered and the other one did not. Yeah. This is one of the problems with uh, hydro implantation that if that happens, sometimes you are in a little bit of a soup and you have to yeah. know, know how to deal with it. Otherwise, uh, they how can... How would you deal with it? And the main thing is that the main incision should not be kind of open to leak. You know, so you have to quickly ensure that the main incision, even if it's a haptic, it's fine because then the incision is not leaky. But if there's part of the IOL inside the incision and it's got stuck, then there will be a problem. So you keep the infusion on and then from a second side put, you put in viscoelastic as a rescue thing. Otherwise, you can't deal with the situation very effectively or very safely. So this is uh, a situation. Yeah, This was what I wanted to be brought forth when I was talking about screw type and push type. But when you talk of push type, I also want to uh, keep, let us all understand that there's a lot of fashion about doing a wound-assisted uh, uh, implantation. I think with a push type, you cannot do a wound-assisted because it can get released uh, suddenly and go and hit the... Uh, opposite end, don't you think so? No, 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 no. So? In fact, I always do wound assisted and I use a shooter for all my IOL injections. So yeah. it works very well. Only thing is, yes, uh, you know, uh, with certain IOLs, you have to be more careful because uh, it can kind of go into a sudden injection. But yes. that can happen uh, even with viscoelastic. Yes. So, yes. But shooters, definitely uh, it is possible. And more so I've seen with Alcon lenses. So I use inject, put Alcon lenses actually with the JNG injectors now because mm -hmm. there the risk of that uh, sudden injection is less. Okay. Dr. Rohit, Dr. Rakuti, anything to take on in his presentation, Dr. which you want What Dr. Jain very nicely showed, one thing mm -hmm. is prevention is better than cure, as he mentioned. So whenever you feel resistance while injecting the lens, do not go ahead and push the lens inside. I mean, whatever be the type, it's usually the overriding of the plunger yeah. onto the optic or the haptic, which causes the problem. So if you have facing a resistance, don't go ahead and push it. Because yeah. then in that case, you, it's always a good idea to bring out the lens outside and re-roll the lens and go ahead. And as regards uh, um, wound-assisted implantation, I have been doing this uh, very regularly for the past uh, six to eight months. And I think it works well. And as uh, um, Gaurav said, you always have to use a push type of injector because you need the second hand to be free to hold the irrigation cannula. And I, what I do is to uh, introduce the irrigation cannula a little more inside, almost halfway into the anterior chamber. And the lens goes under that. And that gives me a little more control in the way it unfolds and the way the lens is guided into the anterior chamber. And I also increase my bottle height, or in my case, the intraocular pressure to almost 70, 80 centimeters so that I have a very well, nicely formed chamber just at that point of time. And the posterior capsule is well behaved. Having said that, in case you are expecting a more difficult implantation, the intraoc lens, it's a very thick lens or something. And then a push type is always, the, then a screw type is always better because it leads to a more controlled release of the intraoc lens rather than a push type, which at times can lead to an explosive release of the intraoc lens in the anterior chain. Very good calls, sir. Yeah. I was in fact going to mention that, you know, when you are uh, using, uh, you know, uh, 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 kind of like a screw type of injector, it becomes mm -hmm. very nice because you can actually, but you can't do wound assisted with a screw type because, you know, you don't have counter pressure. Whereas with hydro implantation, you have counter pressure with your left hand. Uh, so you can actually do wound assisted much better with that. And as sir said that, you know, you can actually introduce the nozzle straight to the mouth of the rexis and deliver your lens there when in tight situations, rather than trying for, uh, you know, using a shooter with wound assisted where the, it will be more unpredictable opening kind of a thing. Yeah, and Dr. Sugato Paul has a point.
point here that if you use an AC maintainer, uh, you could even do a hydro implantation with a screw type, as he says. I am not a great fan of hydro implantation. I don't think removing visco is a big challenge. Dr. Rohit, anything to add before we go on to our next speaker? Yeah, I've had, uh, you know, mishaps twice while using the shooter. So ever since that, I've stopped using it. I only use the screw type. And if I have to use it, the shooter type, it has to be a disposable one, the way Hoya people have it. So I'm a bit, uh, you know, I'm, uh, but I would love to, uh, you know, get into the hydro implantation because that relieves so many things. But since I'm using, uh, you know, a, a calibrated uh, side coat incision, so for that, you cannot have, uh, you know, you, you will have to enlarge it. So my preferred technique is that I use the screw type one because that gives me more control. I had exactly the same thoughts, uh, uh, Rohit, but you know, I saw in a life surgery and hardly it's about seven, eight months since I started uh, using micro implantation. And I really like it. I mean, you have to be a little more careful. And especially nowadays, our uh, implantation of toric intraocular lenses has much come much higher. And you know, you save so much uh, time. There is no viscoelastic to be removed. Just the hydro, you can position, especially when you have a digital overlay system, you can exactly position the toric and trochal lens. And the surgery gets over as soon as you introduce the lens. For a master surgeon like you, I think, I mean, just a, a few cases. Of course, you have to be careful of some mishaps happening, but then it seems to work well. Even yes. post-op IOP spikes are not seen much with hydro implant. Yeah. I'm sure it is a technique which has to be learned and done properly.